All right, let's talk about angels. The history of angels is a lot more complicated than just a bunch of serene looking people with wings hanging out on clouds. Angels span across multiple cultures, time periods, religions, and art. From Gabriel to Lucifer, it's a mixed bunch of... What? We're talking about what? Angles. Oh, angles. All right, let's talk about angles. Unlike angels, we can see them everywhere, and they're pretty easy to understand. In this lesson, we'll look at how to classify and measure angles, and we'll also talk about something called the angle addition postulate to help us determine angle measurement. Today's lesson focuses on measuring and classifying angles. Let's start by defining angle. An angle is formed when two rays have a common end point. That shared common end point is called the vertex. Here you see an example of an angle. We're going to practice naming angles. So there's a few different ways we can do that. Sometimes angles are given a number. We can use that number to name our angles. So first we start with our notation. It looks like a baby angle followed by that number. That's one way to name an angle. Another way to name an angle is to use its vertex. In this example here that we're still looking at, the vertex is U, so we could call this angle A, angle U. The most common way to name angles is by using three letters. Three letters from the angle. The vertex must also always be the middle letter, so we could name this angle angle V U T. Or we could even name it angle T U V. What's important though is that the middle letter is always the vertex. The middle letter must always be the vertex. We can find the measure of angles. Here you see a picture of our protractor. We can find the measure of angle ABC, which can be written as, when we want to find the measure of an angle, the measure of the angle. In this example, it's ABC. And it's equal to the absolute value of the difference between the real numbers matched with ray BA and ray BC on a protractor. So what that means is we take the numbered value on the protractor, both of them, and we subtract them inside the absolute value bars, and that number is our angle measure. That's how big our angle measures. We can classify angles based on their measure. If we have an angle with a measure between 0 and 90 degrees, we can call that angle acute. Our little trick here is, isn't it a cute little angle? Tiny little angles, like tiny little kids, can sometimes be pretty acute. The second kind of angle we can classify are those that are equal to 90 degrees. Oftentimes you'll see them represented in a picture with a little box in the corner. That means it has an, a measure of 90 degrees, which means we call it a right angle. A right angle. If we have an angle with a measure greater than 90 but less than 180, we call that angle obtuse. Obtuse. And finally, angles that measure exactly 180 degrees, they look like a straight line, we call straight angles. Straight lines have a measure of 180 degrees, we call those straight angles. So here, we're going to practice finding angle measures and then classifying the angles. So the first example we have here, we'll do together, we're looking for the measure of angle JHM. I'm going to trace that in another color so it's a little easier to find. J to our vertex H, M. So using my definition of measure, I find the real numbers that they're mapped to on the protractor. So if I start with J, I can say the absolute value of 180 minus 
the number attached to m is 35, and that difference is 145 degrees. So the measure of angle JHM is 145 degrees. This is a measure between 90 and 180, so we can call this angle obtuse. We're going to pause for a moment so you can try example 2 on your own. Let's check your answers together. The measure of angle MHK, again I'm going to trace to find it a little easier. I use the absolute value. The value attached to M is 35 minus the value attached to K is 125. If you did those opposite and did 125 minus 35, you'll get the same answer. Both are acceptable, so you can do either. You should find that the measure of angle MHK is 90 degrees. An angle that measures 90 degrees is called a right angle. Flipping our page, we can say that two angles are congruent. Remember, we have a symbol for congruent. It's the equal with the squiggle above. We can say that two angles are congruent when they have the same measure. And with measures, we use equal signs. So values, measures have an equal sign. Pictures, the image, is congruent. So in math print, with our symbols and notation, we can say, using this picture as our example, in this case, if the measure of angle X is equal to the measure of angle Y, then angle X is congruent to angle Y. Notice that I have the squiggle above my equals now, it's a congruent symbol, and I've dropped the M's because I'm no longer talking about their measure, I'm talking about their picture. So if